Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be one that I haven't really done before. I don't know why. It's a really popular style, so I should have definitely covered it at some point in the past. But it's going to be an aesthetic vaporware-ish banner that you can put up into your server. So, a server banner. And if you're curious as to how it looks, there it is. I took a little screenshot after I had uploaded. So everything is clearly visible, and in my opinion, it looks great. Text, character, etc. And of course, the character you can swap out with somebody like your mascot. It's really up to you how you want to approach that. So without further delay, let's just jump right into this. File, new, and we're going to do 960 by 540, then click create. Now we're going to create a new layer delete the backgrounds, grab our backgrounds, new background, and really anything pinkish and with pink to purplish hues is going to work really well for this. So with the background there, we're going to do control G, we'll call this the base area, this is going to be the base, and now we're going to take this, create a new layer, or sorry, not create a new layer, we're going to do control J, and you'll see why in just a moment. For this base, we're going to right click, go into our blending options, and we are going to go over to gradient overlay. And we want the following settings vivid lights, 26% opacity, scale at 150. As for the colors, left side, pause if you need to to get that number. And then the right side, once again, pause if you have to to get that number. So click OK, 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 then right click and rasterize layer style. Now this new layer, actually Control J with this layer we just rasterized, we're going to go into blending options. And here on this main blending options section, we're just going to uncheck G and the B. Now click OK, make sure you're on the move tool, and then using your arrow keys on your keyboard, just go left. As you can see, it now has a bit of a vapor vibe with this lamp pose, this background, the buildings, etc. being off and having that effect to it. So this is the base and this will be the base effects. Now we simply merge this down. I was thinking for a second we wouldn't need to do that, but yeah, it's merged down. And we can go ahead and grab the branches that we will be using for this. So I'm using these branches and of course this is all going to be included in the description for you to download. So check there, the link works, I promise. We're going to adjust this here for now. Now we're going to take this, go to the bottom, click black and white, and I'm clicking this little half moon, black and white. Or if that's not working for you, you can also go into, I believe, image, adjustments, and black and white there. Either one of those options work. I'm just going to go this route, going to clip that on, merge down, and this is going to be swapped to luminosity. Now I want to make sure this is in the base area. Clipped on just to keep ourselves organized, and I'll call this left branch. Right click on the eyeball, let's make this blue to once again make sure everything is organized. Left branch, we can end it off at about. I'd say here, and I do control J, make sure that's clipped on, call this the right branch, and control T, move this over, make it smaller, and this one, actually you do control T once again, go to the height, and flip the height with a negative. And we'll put this one at around here. So we have the lamppost still visible as well as some of the building, but the branches itself are also there and visible. And we can always adjust this in the future if we don't like how it's positioned. Now I'll create a new layer outside of the group. Do control G and we'll call this the character. Now the character we're gonna grab is just this character right here. And just like before, Control T, adjust her down to about here. Now we're going to do black and white once again. Make sure it's clipped on 
and just right click and merge down. Now control J, right click, blending options, hide the B and the G, click OK. This we're going to move off to the right again with making sure on the move tool. And we go to a point where we are quite happy with. As you can see now, she is, I can never think of the name for it, vaporware-ish. So she's off to the side and we'll call this the character, character offsets, and type. And this is gonna be the character, character, if I can spell. Delete the backgrounds. And now for the color I'm using here, at the time, I just used the eyedropper tool and picked a color from her, but pause if you just want to use the same exact color that I'm using. Now right click on the eyeball, let's make an orange once again to make sure we are organizing ourselves. Now create a new layer and we are going to draw a box using that color. Box is going to be around here and we're going to put it over her eyes because that is the whole aesthetic that this kind of thing is going for. Don't ask me, this is not an aesthetic I personally use, but hey, it's, it looks pretty good, I guess. And we're using 200 by 57, and we're just adjusting that in the top right corner. Where was I pointing to? You can't see where I'm pointing to. But if you don't have this properties window on the right side, make sure you go over to window click properties, it'll pop up right there. You can either leave it there or you can drag it to the side and dock it. Now I'm gonna do control T, hold shift, and I'm gonna rotate this once. Actually, I'll do it a bit lower. So I'm doing about negative 9.1 degrees, so it's covering both her eyes, click the check mark. Now the text I'm gonna be using is in Japanese. I just Google searched English to Japanese translator and the inger side I typed the word right side again the Japanese characters and just copied those we'll call this the eye box I'm going to come back to that in just a second so create a new layer do control G call this the text right click on the eyeball let's make this green and the text we'll just drop it down like so control V there it is the font we're going to use is called Pomerian and we're gonna use straight white for the text color. And we want about 60 pixels for the size of the text. Click the check mark once you have those settings. Now control T, and we want about negative 9.15 degrees again. 9.15, perfect. Make sure that is centered, and yeah. There's the eyes. Let's quickly return back to this. Totally because I didn't forget and I moved on ahead. But return to it. Do control G on the eye box. Right click. Blending options. Hide the G and the B. Move tool and use your arrow keys to down right, down right, down right. So on and so forth. And so you can also see the effect on that having dropped down. Now we are going to... Go back to the text layer, create a new layer, and here we're going to be using the following font color. Pause if you have to to get those numbers, so click OK. Once you have that font color set, click down. I'm going to type T-S-U-K-E-I for the name of my group. The font I'm going to be using is called Tokyo. And both of these fonts are going to be in the description, of course, for you to download and install. Uh, the font size is going to be at 160. Click the check mark. So the TSU, I want about there. And the KEI, so actually if I put the a tab in front of the TSU, it's going to knock it off to the side. So I want a bit of an offset here. There we go, to kind of fit in within the space because the branches are coming a bit of a curve. So if I have this just straight, it's not gonna look as well. So if I offset it a bit, it's gonna fit in better. And then we're gonna put this at a color burn. Where are you at? Color burn, and that's it for that text. Now for the final step, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna go over to this left side, grab the rectangle, drag it down. I'm just going to drag this rectangle across, Control T to free transform. 
and drag it till it fits. Perfect. Now the color we want to use is for the stroke and that color is going to be there at the bottom. Pause if you have to. Click OK and we want no fill so click the little red line to remove the fill and we want 8 pixels as the stroke. Now that really marked the end for the tutorial, there are of course, let me name this the frame, some adjustments you can make to this. For example, this branch, I'm not actually sure if I was supposed to flip it, I don't remember how I made it before. I think flipping was part of the process, but you can also do it that way, but having the branch come up is kind of nice. So let me move that down a bit, and rotate it just so we could see a bit more of the buildings at the bottom, as well as a lamppost. And maybe something else you could do if you don't want any text there, you can move the character to the center, just like so, and then adjust the branches and this text accordingly. Now to actually save this, you either do File, Export, Save for Web, and it's gonna compress it, make it easy to upload for you, or File, Save As, and then choose PNG. Now, that really marks the end for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below. And please feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content like this.